Good evening and welcome to this regular scheduled planning and zoning meeting on this 15th day of March 2021. I want to welcome everyone here this evening. We truly appreciate your interest in the city of Somersville. And now let's just move right on into the agenda. First item on the agenda would be the consideration of our minutes from the meeting held on March 1st, 2021. Move to approve. Thank you. Thank you. I have a first. Second, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Okay, we have a first and a second commission. The motion was to accept the minutes and waive the reading. Everyone has the minutes in your packets. Are there any changes or amendments to the minutes as they are presented? Hearing none, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion so carries. Um, before I get started this evening, I just want to let the commission know that um, I have put in front of you this evening your packet with the slideshow for this evening, which may help you out. Also, I want to welcome uh, Mr. Tim LaRose uh, to his first commission meeting this evening. We're real excited to have him on board, and Timmy, thank you for coming out tonight. Um, because of the change, I went ahead and also, I shouldn't say I, I uh, had a lot of assistance here with uh, Amy Gross. I want to thank Amy. Um, she's put together a new planning and zoning commission contact sheet that uh, you all have in front of you uh, feel free to use that that has all of our contacts on that so you should be right on up to date now um, moving to the next agenda item we have public comment three minutes uh, for anybody that wishes to have comment i have nobody in the house but is there anybody on zoom this evening that would like to make comment Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna move move on. Craig should be here any minute, but we will go ahead and, and move forward. Um, this evening I'd like to do just something a little bit different. I'd like to um, do a, a quick roll call. Amy, uh, Lauren, I hope it's okay with you all. I'd like to sort of get a roll call of who is on board with us this evening. Um, I can certainly uh, call names that I can see. I see that Amy is with us. Daniel is with us. Uh, of course, obviously Jason, who is uh, keeping us in contact here. Michael is with us. Jennifer, Lauren, Kevin, Stevie LaRose, Lauren Weatherford, got Brandon and Jim. Uh, I cannot make out the the others. So if I have not mentioned your name, would you please call out your name? Is that Mayor Schaefer on the phone, Gary? Could be. He is actually in an airport traveling. Um, so it's, it's sort of noisy, but he's going to be on as long as he can until um, his flight takes off. But that could be him. I'm going to call it him because I know I know he's going to be on here. So um, that helps. I appreciate that. And I will note that as, as visitors to the meeting. Have a Amy, I don't know, or Lauren, Amy, I'm not sure who wants to take off with it, but I'm going to put, put you in charge now. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to quickly share the uh, agenda for this evening. Let's see what's that? Oh, a for me. Sorry, it was there and it decided to go away. There it goes. There we go. All right. Um, so we're going to start out with a little bit of follow-up from our last event. Mike Doherty is going to carry on with that. And Amy Cook, our agent from Braxton and Clay, who also lives in Somersville, is going to go over this week's elements, followed by a little Q&A and some announcements about the following meeting we have in two weeks after. Does anyone have any questions or comments before we get started? All right. Well, then I will turn it over to Mike Doherty. Okay. 
can, can you give me some screen sharing so I can put some quick little things up? Sure. You got it now. Okay. I'm not going to take a lot of time, but we, we had discussions last time about uh, low-speed vehicles and just trying to figure out what was what. I did a little bit more investigation and just wanted to differentiate between low-speed vehicles, golf carts, and ATVs. They each have their own set of laws and rules in West Virginia. Um, low-speed vehicles are literally, they, they, it, there's a, they're defined as either title or the certificate of origin. Say they're a low-speed vehicle. They're generally um, not designed to go over 25 miles an hour. They're, they look like cars, but they're not. Uh, if you've ever been in a and seen, you know, I, I know on campus, I park next to something and they're like, well, that kind of looks like a car, but it doesn't look like it go very fast. That's a low-speed vehicle. And there's a lot of state laws on that. They're all the relevant ones. But even here, the, the, I mean, they're defined in federal code. Uh, that's the Code of Federal Regulations right here, Title 49, and describes them. Uh, you put a license plate on them, they're basically just little cars that you can't take on, but roads that can go up to 25 miles an hour, and you can cross roads with the, that have speeds up to 40 miles an hour. So they are, the DMV and the state police handle these just like any other vehicle, and the, uh, the relevant code sections are there. Um, next is uh, golf carts. And these are actually specifically prohibited from state roads. Uh, but they, you could, this, the municipality could say, we allow them on city streets and pass laws on that. I can't. I can find a definition and find that they're prohib prohibition of them. I can't find this part, a reference that they're allowed on city streets, but I can find examples. There are several um, that, that uh, if you start reading news articles uh, in the Kanawha Valley, but one that I could actually find the code for was the town of Eleanor, which has specific setup for where you could take, what roads you could do, and where you could cross other roads. Um, Essentially, the difference between these, if you look, this is just a regular golf cart. It is not, um, you can't get, it has, doesn't have lights, doesn't have thing, um, turn signals. That, now, they actually have standards depending on if you put lights and turn signals on it, when you can use it. Something like this without anything, it's only daytime in Eleanor. If you put um, some of the other safety features, you could use it uh, for more time, which gets to all-terrain vehicles, which um, they last year, the state passed a law that you could, if you put in safety features, lights, signals, etc., they can become street legal special purpose vehicles. And as long as they have the safety equipment. Um, generally though, regular ATVs without safety equipment, which is as pictured here, that's another item regulated by local government. I said municipal, it's mostly cities, although a, a homeowners association also can sometimes put, um, act in that capacity both for uh, the golf carts and the ATVs and just some of the relevant code sections with that. But again, the, the whole point is that there are three different classifications of vehicles and they all have their own sets of rules associated with them. And we did some, last time it was a little bit confusing and a little bit uh, uh, co conflating the different ones. But what we're talking about in the plan were the low speed vehicles, although golf carts were also mentioned those are different, and would each would require their own sets of rules, but you're within your right as a municipality to approve the use of either one of them. And, you know, certainly, that's something that you could consider uh, as we talked about last time. So that's really, I just wanted to uh, get that out there so people knew what the differences was, and I will turn control of the meeting back to uh, Amy, I think, is taking over at this point. All right, thanks for that clarification. Maybe we should ask if there are any questions about that really quickly since we're on the feedback part from, from our last session. Do we need any more clarification about that or anything else we talked about last time? I know I don't have any, but Michael, I wanna thank you because that does clear up a few things there, so thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, I just, I, I, I realized it got kind of confusing, so I, I wanted to make sure that and put that in, in so people knew what the different pieces were. I, um, and different options. Good. All right, well, we will jump right into elements six and seven then. Everybody can see my screen? Awesome. All right, 
so element six is civic facilities, and our overarching goal here is to develop and maintain adequate facilities for government and civic activities in the community. Um, and what you'll notice in element six as you go through it is that we have, we use the word maintain a lot. And so that's great because that means that we're already doing a lot of good things in terms of civic facilities and uh, we just need to maintain what we're doing. So we have five objectives for this goal uh, that we'll go through one by one like we have each week. Objective number one is to maintain state-of-the-art municipal administration facilities. So some of the strategies associated with that would be providing office space equipment and other necessary facilities of sufficient quality and quantity to enable efficient, effective government operations. So basically, you know, we want to make sure that we maintain our uh, government facilities that we have and co-locate any administrative offices uh, when we can do that. And, and we do see some of that in Summersville um, in terms of the courthouse, the city building being in close proximity to each other um, so that people who may have official business are able to kind of do that all in one trip. So. I think that um, we're doing a great job. Um, objective number two is to use intergovernmental partnerships to create and maintain those shared use facilities. Uh, so we want to locate municipal, county, and special district facilities close in proximity to facilitate intergovernmental collaboration. Cooperate with adjoining municipalities or counties to provide facilities that are beneficial to summer's home residents, but which would be underutilized or too costly if they were provided by the city alone and establish shared use agreements for facilities. Do we have any questions about objectives one or two so far? Sound good? All right, so objective three is to remain responsive to facilities needs through an ongoing capital improvement plan. So we want to maintain a complete and current inventory of city owned or shared facilities. We want to anticipate facility needs in the future in response to the population growth and geographic expansion that we may see in Somersville. We also want to locate new civic facilities in proximity to population centers and in response to other factors, including traffic patterns and volume, which we've talked about in some of those previous elements. Questions or comments about that one? All right, so objective four is to maintain a public library system for use by all residents. Operate the public library independently or in cooperation with the regional system. Maintain a library board to oversee and ensure adequate and appropriate services for Somersville residents. And objective five is to maintain community centers that support continuing adult education community group meetings, and other civic activities. So some strategies associated with that would be to establish shared facility use agreements with the Nicholas County School District for use of Somersville Elementary School facilities after hours. Collaborate with the New River Community and Technical College and WBU Extension Service to provide continuing adult education in community center facilities. Maintain a partnership with the Nicholas Old Main Foundation to manage and operate community programs in the community center. And of course, you see in that language there after the middle school is relocated because of course they're using that facility uh, until the new school is built. Maintain ownership and operation of Brown Oaks as a community center for the arts. And maintain a partnership with the Nicholas County Senior Center to ensure adequate services and programming for the senior residents and to manage and operate community use of the facility. Any thoughts or questions about that one? Because I think we're just about done with our civic facilities. Hearing none, we will move on to element seven. So element seven is parks and recreation, and here our overarching goal is to create and maintain parks and recreation facilities that serve the needs of all of our community members. So we've got eight objectives associated with this goal. The first one's got quite a few strategies here. We've got two screens of strategies involved with preparing and maintaining a parks and recreation master plan for the city of Somersville that provides a long range vision for public parks development and recreation programming. 
So one of the strategies involved with that objective would be to establish a Parks and Recreation Commission. Another one would be to inventory existing public and private facilities and services to develop an estimate of existing supply. Develop estimates of current and future demand based on demographic projections and resident surveys. And engage the public to determine preferences for park locations and amenities and recreation facilities and programming. So let's stop and see if we have any questions or comments about that first slide, and then we'll continue on with the rest of those strategies. Amy? Yeah. I have I have just a few questions. <clears throat> um, of course, it seems like every every Monday night I'm saying I got something near and dear to my heart. I really do. Um, <laughs> recreation is huge, uh, in my opinion, for our community, and I want to really move forward in the right direction in this. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, because I'm sure you guys have more experience in this than I do, but um, do you find that these um, rec commissions are becoming more popular or less popular? Um, I've got probably a two-part here, because it seems that oftentimes uh, these uh, commissions are local boards, unpaid volunteers, um, do you find, and, and, and I was, did, I did some checking on some of them, like I know the Wood County area still uses recreation <coughs> commissions. Um, you know, where I'm from in a little town of Vienna, there was a, a movement to do a little bit of that. And there was a, just an outcry that these folks have been doing this for volunteer for years and years and years and years. And now, you know, they're wanting to just basically step in and take over in a sense. I don't see it that way. I see it more as a commission would be more to support those boards and support, I mean, you, you need to have boards with that commission, I'm assuming. Um, but are these, are these rec commissions becoming more um, useful or are they starting to slide away a little bit? Um, I fear that in times it's hard to get volunteers now. I mean, I would think a rec commission would certainly be of a lot of help, uh, to be quite honest with you, and then still have local folks doing and controlling some boards uh, that the commission could answer to. But I'm just curious about some of that um, because we're, we're running into that here where we have a lot of volunteers. I mean, we have folks that have volunteered here for years and years and years. I don't want to hurt feelings by stepping in, but I, I'm just curious if that if that's if the commissions are still being used. So the Parks and Recreation Commission would not take the place of your individual <clears throat> park boards. Okay. You would still have your park boards that would make decisions relative to that particular park. And the Parks and Recreation Commission would basically be like the master planners of, of the entire city is how we look at it. And I think, you know, Mike can chime in here, he, he works more with city governments than I do, but um, I think it's pretty standard for this to happen. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, a lot's going to, I mean, you can design it in any way you want to. You can have each, I mean, an oversight, you, you could have it take over all the parts. I'm not saying that you want to do that, but that it, it, it's within the purview. I mean, if, if you're having problems getting people working on all the parts, having one, you know, adding everybody together and having to work on all of, you know, if you're having trouble getting people working on each individual part, getting those who are wanting to overseeing all the parts would have a benefit. But if you have, if everybody's fine, you don't want to do that. Just having some sort of umbrella in the Parks and Recreation Commission would be the way to go. Um, they have that in. Uh, I mean, Morgantown uses a, a commission that that oversee, and they they run everything. And how it's going to shake out, you know, time will tell it. Um, but depending, how many how many parks does the city have? That have Six. park boards. Yeah, City of Somerville really does not have any official parks that I'm aware of. Yeah, so um, I mean, we have, so we, we're involved in the uh, Nicholas County Memorial Park. We're involved in that, but I mean, the county has, yeah, the ownership of that park. So, I mean, we do assist in it, um, right. certainly at times, but it is under the ownership of the county. Yeah, I, I, and I think part of the reason for this is thinking that if, as the city goes and establishes its own small parks, and you know, be in, which would be in addition to 
the, the uh, Veterans Memorial Park but something that, to supplement for, for Somersville residents, that there would need to be some sort of mechanism for oversight. And, and a Parks and Recreation Commission is uh, what West Virginia law allows you to do. And so that's the reason there for, if you're going to move in that, if you were to move in that direction, or to have something oversight that that, that is in there for. But again, depending on, you know, is there, I mean, it may be something that needs additional investigation depending on what the city uh, does or, or what it already operates and what it wants to operate. Yeah. But the, Absolutely, Michael, and I 100% I, I agree. I like commission. I do like the commission because I envision moving forward that we may have additional parks in the city limits at some point in time. And, um, you know, commission would be somewhat of a liaison with the city and the county and can work, you know, in conjunction with them and, and, and really help us and give us a boost at times. So, um, yeah, I think it's certainly a need for sure. Um, now, in regard to the recreation, I think we may have to tiptoe a little bit and make sure that, that we get everybody on board with that. But uh, I see uh, just in the, the rec commissions that I've checked with in the last, say, six weeks, they do tremendous work. I mean, uh, the equipment and the budgeting and, I mean, the funding and, uh, you know, they, they, they truly assist. So um, I think it will only um, improve what we have and, and take us even further. So, you know, I'm on board with that. I was just wondering if the commission is becoming, the rec commissions are becoming more popular or less popular. That's all I have. And as we're getting ready to talk about in a couple slides, um, this plan recommends, you know, providing additional city parks. So if that were to stay in the plan, if that's how the Planning and Zoning Commission would, would like to keep the plan, then it makes a lot of sense to establish parks and recreation commission, you know, somebody to oversee all those additional um, things that the city is going to put in. Absolutely. Any other questions about those four strategies? All right, same goal, same objective. The additional strategies we have here are to design parks, recreation facilities, and programming in response to resident preferences, include parks development in the capital improvement plan, budget and resource development activities, hold biannual public hearings to review and update the parks and recreation master plan, explore various fee and tax revenue options to implement the parks and recreation master plan, and explore use of shared revenues from the hydroelectric power plant, power plant to fund Lake Oregon Parks development. Do we have questions about those? Amy, uh, would you or uh, someone expand on number nine? Uh, number nine? On, on number nine where it says that you're going to share the revenues I thought those revenues were were established, and uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I know in the beginning, uh, I know Steve worked hard on that, and I was familiar with it, and I thought those those revenues were dedicated as well. So when you say share them, does that mean you're talking about the the funds that the city itself gets, or the revenues received from the the hydro plant. So you have to remember this plan is looking to the future. So it's our 2030 uh, plan. And what's happening is at some point in time around 2030, um, the the loan or the um, you know whatever the city has taken out for the hydroelectric power plant is going to be paid off. So there's going to be more income coming in from that. And if Mayor Schaefer is on here, he's welcome to chime in here and, and talk about that. Um, but that is where that strategy is coming from, looking ahead to the future of when the city is going to be seeing more revenue from that hydroelectric power plant. Okay, uh, define for me lake-oriented park development. Did explain that to you? Okay, so there's going to be a slide coming up here in a minute where we'll talk a little bit more about it, but something that we explored while creating this plan was, um, and we talked about this in a previous session, uh, some annexation of some land near the lake area um, so that the city of Somersville could um, establish a, uh, an area there to do different types of things. Um, 
And I know in earlier sessions that people uh, had some strong feelings about that. And so if we take it out of those other sessions or those other sections of the plan, then obviously it's going to come out here too. Um, but the, the thought there was to annex some pieces of property adjoining the city and the lake uh, to develop some different park type and even resort type things in that area. And, and one thing that different, um, this is unique for cities, it, unless it's, it's been changed and the last time I looked at it had not been, you can have a city park outside the city limits. So you don't, have to have, and you don't even have to annex the land. What you could buy property adjacent to the lake and call it a Somersville City Park and have that development and be a, it would be a city park. Counties have to have, their parks have to be entirely within the county. But a city can have its park land outside of the municipal boundaries. So that, that's a little bit different. You, you can do that, you can develop that park land even without the annexation occurring. So even if you excise the annexation, that does not preclude park development. So, uh, I'm somewhat confused on this, which is probably not unusual, but you're either going to have to deal with the County Commission or the Corps of Engineers, correct? Or both? Or do you have to? For annexation you would, but if you're just purchasing it, no. If you're purchasing it, you know, you buy it from somebody. Now, if it's owned by the County Commission or the Corps of Engineers, and, and these are ideas of feasibility have not been taken into account. If it is all owned by, if it, all that property is owned by the Corps, for example, you're not going to get it. And so that, that would preclude that. But if there's a private, but if there's say some private landowner with land adjacent to the lake, and they're willing, and they're a willing seller, and the city's a willing buyer, the city could buy that property and then set up a park there. That would not be, it would not be precluded from that. And it wouldn't have to deal with the county commission because you're not annexing the land. It's not on the wall. It's close. It's close. Like the brights are the there's a buffer. Yeah, 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 Amy, we were just saying that there is another park, uh, the Mowley Trail Park down there is also a park that can be utilized too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. See, you've already got one park charge that park system. Good, good job, Maybe. Right. <laughs> I just told you to talk about that here a little bit. You've got to one already. Yeah. <laughs> good work, Amy. Thank you. Yep. Oh, yes. That's a miracle here. Yeah. <laughs> you can start up the deal. All right, any more questions about me, strategies? Um, one thing I just want to know, just it, it's a wording, is that public hearing has a, a, a often a legal definition. You might want to, I mean, if in the final claim, you might want to use four or something like that, unless you're actually going to convene a public hearing. Uh, so that, that's just, that, that's a technical point. And only one could I, I raise because I sat for 15 minutes in a public hearing when no one spoke tonight. <clears throat> All right, are we good? We're good. All right, so let's move on to objective number two, which is to locate neighborhood <clears throat> park. So that no pedestrians need to cross an arterial road to access a park. So we talked about this a little bit um, in our land use um, element, I think, uh, when people were questioning um, the suggestion to put in some light or signage to, to help people get across the street there. Um, so the strategies involved with, with this one would be to acquire land as available with a goal of about five to 10 acres per neighborhood park. 
um, design and develop neighborhood parks with amenities preferred by those community residents. So you'll notice a lot in this section we talk about um, uh, engaging the community to find out what they really want in terms of developing these parks and facilities. Formalize shared use and maintenance agreements with the Nichols County School Board and New Life Christian Academy to allow public access to the school outdoor recreational areas. Um, because, you know, by doing that, then um, you do have a neighborhood park for a lot of our smaller neighborhoods here. Of course, with New Life, we've got those different apartments that are around that area, and then we've got um, a couple streets that can access. Lincoln, I think, is one of them that can access that area. Um, we can figure out a safe way to do that. And then, of course, um, Somerville Elementary, you've got all of McKee's Creek and those side streets there that are able to use those um, play areas. Do we have any questions about this particular objective or strategy involved with it? Um, Amy, I want to just ask if, will the plan have like specifics or just, I mean, they're just going to have these big overarching goals, but it's not going to identify locations within the community to best suit these land uses or anything, are they? So this particular comprehensive plan will not go into specifics. There are some project implementation plans where um, some additional work was done to identify some things, um, but the, the comprehensive plan does not go into specifics. No specific places for the small community parks yet, or um, that type of thing yet. Okay. Right. It, it, now, <laughs> that being said, it, it's your plan. If you want to identify some and put them in there, that's your prerogative. Um, it has not been identified yet. Um, and in part, remember, this plan um, had the wonderful, oh, we can't come down there. I mean, it, it, a lot of things happened right during the development original development of this plan but you know um, so I, I've seen it done both ways I've seen some plans that are very detailed and I've seen some that are very 30,000 feet and it just depends on what the Planning Commission wants and feels comfortable with you may not feel comfortable in a plan for example outlining exactly where you want to put the parks because that's going to telegraph the property owner if you want to acquire that property and suddenly the prank quadruples but if you put in the concept and then work towards it I mean you may have a list in your head and work towards it, you're able to get that at a much uh, better uh, price. Or if you have to go from alternative one to alternative two, you don't become a, you don't have people asking you, well, why didn't you get the first one? So there, there are uh, reasons for not getting some of these details in there. But then again, if you look, there's other details about you know working with the schools. That was very specific. But some of these in neighborhood parks, you know, it'd be very difficult to be specific unless you knew exactly you know oh uh, Joe and Jane will each sell us parcels to put parts we can put that in there uh, but that doesn't give like in 10 years we're going to acquire five acres and you're giving you're giving goals and kind of well, how much land you'd like to acquire somewhere within the city limits right and then it's commission would work closely to determine maybe have an actual plan that's on paper that they're going to the best pieces of property that and, and I think I think yes, and I think somewhere in here there's standards that talks about how much park land you should have for people, so you get those numbers um, along the way. Yeah, that that goal, the five to ten acres per neighborhood park, is a um, recommendation by the National uh, Recreation and Parks Association. And there are references. I don't know, Jennifer, if you actually have a copy of the comprehensive plan. So there's. Um, some paragraphs at the beginning, you know, a summary of what the element's going to be about. It talks about that in there. Then at the end, there are references to where that information came from. So that might help you a little I bit. I haven't done that far yet, but I've okay. read yeah. the, the draft I've dug through once or twice. Okay, <laughs> great. So that information is there if anybody's curious about where some of these things came from. Um, and we should go into a little bit more specifics. So just hang tight. We'll, we'll get there a little bit, I think. Um, but we, it, there, it's not that every single part was identified um, at the outset of the writing of the plans. Amy, I have a comment. This is Jim. Uh, yeah. It seems to me for our small town that the five to ten acre goal for a neighborhood park is a little bit ambitious. So, I mean, our neighborhood's not that big. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know whether we'd want to consider revising that a little bit or not. And, and if it's all uh, resident driven anyway you know a smaller 
an area might be sufficient for a neighborhood. Absolutely, you have that option to revise that number. That's, that's definitely within your rights to do that. Again, that recommendation came from um, the National Recreation Tax Association, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's within your all's rights to look at that and say, hey, that doesn't actually make a lot of sense for our particular city. <laughs> Remember, that's a national standard yeah. type of measure, and every place is different, has their own needs. I mean, do you have count not counted toward now you, you may end up with that much parkland but you know you've already got you're starting with a big surplus with the with the veterans memorial park which is red some you know which is not difficult for most people to access if they have access to a vehicle so you don't have to provide you know some uh, park as much park for everybody as you might otherwise have to do so i agree Any other questions or comments? Okay. Our third objective is to develop and maintain regional parks in locations where traffic will not disturb nearby residents. The Veterans Memorial Park should remain in a Nichols County hub for outdoor activity and sporting events. Develop and maintain a parking area and paddlers launch onto Muddledy Creek, north of the Gully River, which is what we were just talking about next uh, to Hughes Bridge there, adjacent to the wastewater treatment facility. Or I'm sorry, down, um, this would be Brass Bridge, right? Yeah. Through an easement or permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and West Virginia Department of Natural Resources. Annex or obtain easements from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to park through the land between the south end of McKees Creek Road to Summersville Lake to create a recreational area with a wide range of amenities. Seek shared funding operations and maintenance agreements with the Nicholas County. Nicholas County, the West Virginia Department of Natural Resources, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers as appropriate. So questions or comments about this one? I think you just keep reharping how important it is to have your recreation committee or a commission because you have to have all these big partners outside looking in knowing where those funding sources are. Absolutely, it, it makes sense, right? Anybody else? All right. Objective number four is develop and maintain linear parks that serve both residents and visitors. So one of those strategies is to develop a linear park and multi-use path by extending the existing Muddledy Creek Trail northward, providing non-vehicular access points for residential areas and vehicle parking and access points for commercial and light industrial areas. So what we're talking about there is um, the Muddledy Creek Trail which of course if you go down past the old blue ribbon and down there, down there um, you can access the, the Metal Lake Creek Trail there. By bringing it northward, we're talking about giving access to Holly Hills residents where they could just walk and you know, have an access point from, you know, walking from their door to an access point to get on that trail. And then even further northward so that people could um, park at North Side, some areas up there where we might develop some gravel parking lots and they could access the path from there. It's just extending it northward, basically. The other strategy is to develop a linear park and multi-use path along the Keys Creek Road from Alderson Avenue, which is the first street on the right after the funeral home, Mike's funeral home here, to the Summersville Lake Recreation Area and the Keys Creek Trailhead. Questions or comments about that one? I think they're wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. I think it would be awesome. <laughs> I'm now, now just just to note back parks that I talked about before if this land is outside it either has to be in the city or city owned or do, done jointly so if it goes outside the city you may need a, I mean it would have to be in partnership with the county or some other entity um, overseeing their parks but I mean I can't see why anybody wouldn't want to do it I should remain biased for my job, but as a resident, I would love to see residents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can wear more than one hat, Amy. You just have to like, you know. <laughs> All right, let me know about my resident hat. Can we do this? <laughs> Any other what questions or any comments about that one? What about trails and stuff over going out towards the um, the RC flyer place with the airplanes and then the. Well, it's run right. 
and the wetlands are out there having more of that accessible or access to the wetlands yeah so you're talking about the Phillips run road area mm -hmm. and so the, the you know of course that's not in city limits is why yeah. um yeah, I didn't really address much in the plan. But yeah, I would love to see that too. Yeah. <laughs> Amy, this is very popular with the citizens. Uh, people are begging for places to go walk. People are begging for these parks. So um, certainly I think gaining momentum with this is going to be an easy task force. I think the community is going to jump right behind it. I agree with you here. We've gotten a lot of good feedback um, from local people about wanting to have more places to run, to walk, to recreate. So it's great. Anybody else? Hey, it's Stevie from Rose. How are you? Hey, Stevie. Quick question. I had to step out for a moment. I came back in here and I wanted to see all of you. Has there been any, anything about you know, our dog park? Been talking to you. I've had a couple of folks mention that to me that I knew weren't going to be able to go in on this. But I thought I'd just throw that out there that that might be something to consider um, with us. I know we kind of mentioned it before. I think a couple of times, I can't remember what it was going on. But I don't know if that was something that was kind of firm to me as well. I think we could do that on the county courthouse. In a dog park, that's what you said, Steve? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That might be something to, to just throw as something that might be con considerable uh, for the city uh, in this plan. I don't know if that's in there or in the future. Like I said, I had to step out for a second, but uh, I know I had a, a, a citizen, actually a couple, mention that too. So, something to consider. Uh, I just want to add that um, I've been involved a little bit in. Oak Hill establishing their dog park, which is now up and gated and accessible. And Fayetteville is also developing theirs, and they are immensely popular with the community. So I'm not advocating or not advocating. I'm just kind of sharing that those have been a real, a really, truly popular thing for the city to implement. And I'll just add a quick side note. Um, my daughter and her friend are participating in the WVU My Hometown is Cool project, and um, that is some an idea they came up with on their own was to do it a dog park. They changed their minds for what their official idea is for what they're going to um, apply for there, but um, so even our kids are thinking about it. So I think that's awesome, and can easily be added into the plan. Amy, you might want to make a note of that, to, or someone, so it gets put in there, because that's certainly, uh, again, that's part of the reason we're, we're doing this, and it's uh, certainly something that is, as you said, very popular. Um, we have a facility, right where I live, there's an informal dog park, because the school basically let people come into it. They're, they kept the property, but only use it, I mean, don't care what people, if people access it when it's not school hours, it's a special facility school and in the back it's been fenced and there's, there's a playground area and an area is an open field in the back and it's become an informal dog park. Mm -hmm. it, has any part of your planning process, I know you're looking at 2030 and all these new schools and stuff hopefully will be built by then. Are they looking, is part of the plan looked at all at the old elementary school and what the game plan is going to be at that piece of property? So I think the housing element, which is next number eight, I think it um, touches on the old Somersville Elementary School. Okay. Um, it will be the, the old Somersville Park, the dog park too. I didn't know, and I was like, maybe there's some. There needs to be something in that plan to so it doesn't become some vacant. Yeah. Sore in the middle of town. Anybody else? Our next objective is to develop and maintain downtown squares and pocket parks. So um, we want to maintain the county courthouse lawn and downtown pavilion, which are excellent amenities of the city, uh, as public spaces for events, farmers, markets, fairs, and festivals. We also want to develop, um, or this strategy talks about developing gateway pocket parks at either end of Main Street that have landscaping, seating, signage, 
um, just basically to make our downtown area pop out and let people know that they are in that downtown area. Um, so talking about little pocket parks, and there's a little a definition, I think, in summary I sent to the Planning and Zoning Commission about what a pocket park is. Uh, it can be very small, um, but something to sort of indicate that you are now downtown. Any thoughts or questions about that one? Objective number six is to ensure sufficient shared open space and recreation areas within private development. So some of the strategies we're looking at here are to revise the subdivision ordinance to require that we have five acres per 50 houses in single family residential development. So when we have new developments coming in, we want them to know from the outset that you know we are requiring um, some shared open space and recreation areas in our new development. Require shared open space and children's play areas and trailer parks and multifamily housing developments. And I think somebody already pointed out that we might want to change the language there to mobile home parks um, as opposed to trailer parks. So that's something to make a note of. And to require shared seating and gathering areas in commercial development. So make sure that we have you know, those commercial development areas, benches, and, and places for people to sit and gather. Any questions about this particular objective or strategy? Comments? Develop, develop recreation facilities to augment existing civic facilities. So we want to pursue development of Nicholas County YMCA along US 19 between the Nicholas County High School football field and the New River Community and Technical College. And strategy number two is to seek employer sponsorships or memberships for employee use of those recreation facilities. Comments or questions about that one? I know someone has them. An opinion about that one. I just think it's wonderful. I haven't read that part of the plan, and when I first moved to town, the first thing I thought I was going to get ambitious about was a YMCA, and then got shot down pretty quickly when I realized how hard it was. Yeah. Were, so I think it's a it would be a huge win. So so just backstory, um, you know, came to be in the plan because there were was already a small group of people that were working on this, I believe. Um, so that you know why it was included in the plan, but I'm sure people have thoughts and opinions about it. So if you'd like to talk about it now, let's do that. I'd like to ask uh, about this YMCA. Um, concept here is that an ongoing thing uh, in the local community or do you all know that or is it just a thought uh, or maybe the county commission would know <laughs> i was going to say if there's anybody at that table that has more information about it feel free to share or if mayor shaper is on the phone and wants to talk about it YMCA would probably be pretty difficult um, you know you'd have to work with a national organization it would have to be self-sustaining so you have to have a certain amount of participation and income that it would generate and for the YMCA to actually want to put one of those specifically in the community is going to be a tall order for the towns for a town the size of Summersville. I can tell you, I just went through a process where Montgomery and Smithers had the Canal Valley YMCA, the Charleston YMCA, come into Charles to Montgomery and Smithers in the old um, WVU Tech gym um, rec building there. And in 
less than two years they were gone because they could not sustain the facility. What might make more sense is to take out the language about a YMCA, and this is just kind of my personal recommendation based on the experience that I've had, and put in there something along the lines of community center, which wouldn't negate the options for a YMCA, but would leave the opportunities open to still do something of that same kind of idea without tying yourself into a YMCA. I was just going to make that suggestion that that's, we wanted to probably go generic on that because it could be, you know, YMCA is a certain brand, a certain type. There's nothing wrong with the brand or type, but it may not be appropriate or feasible in all situations where if you call it a community center, you range everything from a YMCA if you're able to get such a national organization to come and invest, your, invest with your community to just the community operating its own community center and rec center. And so you have a much broader range of possibilities by using more generic language there. Makes sense to me. Yeah, that was, that's why I heard the same thing that Lauren said about it was population based and that we weren't going to get anywhere with our population right now. Hey, can, can you all hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yes. We can hear you. Hey, this is, uh, this is uh, Robert. Um, I'm actually on delay right now, a snow delay in Chicago. So um, uh, I wasn't going to do this because I'm in a crowded airport and I talk real loud. So everybody in Chicago will know what uh, Somersville's plan is. Um, but um, we did a very comprehensive, in-depth, as a matter of fact, when I first became mayor, traveled to the state of Ohio and uh, actually visited four YMCAs. And, and the YMCA deal, from a sustainability standpoint, um, is just so not feasible for a small rural community to have a YMCA. Um, so I do think that YMCA specific should be removed. Um, also, when you talk about parks and rec for the city, um, we, until we had to turn it over to, um, in, in a good way, to help the middle school. Um, we also, from Parks and Recs, we had um, a substantial budget um, where we were running the old main gym and many activities through there and even had a small rec room down on the, the um, downside of it. Um, and then of course we turned that facility over to the Board of Ed. So, so that was in our Parks and Rec department um, and planned to at some point in time pick that back up. So it is much more feasible to think about um, a facility um, expansion, something like what we have, or even maybe um, another facility to add to what we have. But a YMCA is not practical um, for the small rural community. When we looked at membership and sustainability, and even the comment earlier about trails with corporate sponsorships, um, that's good, but we lean hard on um, our corporate sponsorships in our area for everything else, um, you know, uh, I don't know what the appetite would be, um, you know, to build on Parks and Rec um, as well. Um, and and uh, the comment about the hydro that was made earlier, um, we will have a windfall of hydro money. Um, take um, 2031 and back it up four years. Actually, for the city of Somersville, the hydro funds will almost triple in those last um, four years of the current contract that expires in 2031. Um, so I think this is a great opportunity to start doing some great planning for parks and recs because I think from a budgetary standpoint, um, the city itself will be able to build and then, of course, just manage going forward the sustainability piece. Thank you. Great information to share. So we, we've made a note that you might consider changing that to just a you know, generic community center as opposed to um, naming a YMCA in, in the plan. Any other, any other thoughts or comments about this particular objective and strategy? All right. 
Moving on, objective number eight is to provide recreational programming for all ages. So we're talking about pursuing partnerships with other public and nonprofit organizations that fit groups to do that. Marketing the recreation programs via various media to ensure maximum usage and including all city parks and recreation activity schedules on the community calendar. So just basically getting the word out about all this good stuff that, that uh, can be done in parks and rec through the plan. Thoughts or comments about that one? All right, well that is it. So how about any thoughts or comments about element six or seven in general? If we're good, I am going to turn it over to Daniel. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Uh, yeah, I will, I'll, I'll keep it short. I just want to remind everybody uh, about the, the survey link to provide your feedback on the sessions. Um, if, if there are things that you, that you are particularly passionate about, please make sure that you weigh in there and let us know. I mean, we, we are taking notes and highlighting things that, that people are in support of or, or not in support of, but that that tool is a way for us to capture that feedback so that when we put everything together in a report, it's not just us saying, yeah, it sounds like people didn't like this, right? We actually have feedback from you all saying, yeah, this isn't gonna work, or this idea is great, we really wanna do this. So please make sure that you take the time to, uh, to get this completed. Did I have anything else I was going to say? I think that was it. All right. <laughs> all good, Amy? I think we're all good. You have the next date, April 5th, I believe it is, at 6 p.m. So we have a, an extra week, I think, here, right? Yeah. Enjoy right. your break. I do want to, again... <laughs> I do again want to thank everybody for attending tonight. We had some new faces. Jennifer, I appreciate your input tonight. It was nice having you on. I uh, hope to see you on the next meeting too. And again, thank you to the Extension Office. You guys do wonderful work and it's fantastic to have you along with us on this. Uh, are, are there any other questions? Any comments? Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a first. I have a second. Jack. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Thank you.